Uh, may I ask what what happened? If I may ask. You know, when the police moved his body, he had two blue pills under his body. And that's and that's something big in our community that we, as as a people, got to start rising up and speaking against it because it's taking our boys, it's taking our young girls, the drug academic drug academic out here, right? And the one thing about our people, because when we wake up, we don't see nothing to be happy about. And more people use that to medicate, you know, self-medicate themselves to make them feel better, because nobody want to feel bad, because we in this oppression as a people. Right. Give me um, Ecclesiastes 77. <laughs> and and kind of what I was going into, our problems as a people is why we stay in this oppression. And why like a, a never-ending cycle of death, drug use, shooting, killings. Right, because we left... We left God. We left the one true God, and these are the curses that came upon our people. Right. So we can come back to God. Because sometimes, you know, when God talks to you, he's going to talk to you in a harsh way. So you can get back to him. All right? That, that makes sense what I'm saying, Steve? Yeah. Oh, bro. Read what you got. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 7. Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad. A wise man mad. And a gift destroy up the heart. The Bible says oppression make a wise man mad. And that man going to being crazy. Because it's crazy to take something that you know ain't good for you. But the oppression that we lived in, that um, what they call it, that post-slavery syndrome that we have, this reason why people keep going through the same thing. How many more academics that people got to go through? Crack academics, uh, heroin academics. Now the fentanyl, and they push it in our, in our communities. Because we don't have no boats and no planes to fly that stuff in. Man, read, read that bottom part. And a gift destroy up the heart. These drug companies making all these drugs and all that, all that stuff, and they're giving it out freely. Is it in that gift destroy up the heart? We think we coming up when we can go to the pharmacy and get this and get that. But the Bible says it destroys us. So one thing as a people, we gotta start coming back to God. Right. If we don't come back to God, it's gonna keep on happening. It's gonna keep on happening. Because Matthew, you know the question said, do you know what the love of God is? What, what the love of God is? How do we show God that we love Him? To obey and do what He asks. I like that, and that's, 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 that's exactly right. See, get that real. Put it out the Bible. Because if we don't do what God say do, if we don't show God we love Him, all the deaths gonna keep on happening. All the all, all the oppression gonna keep on happening. Come on, you read that. First John chapter five, verse three. Right out. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. So what you said was exactly right. This is the love of God that we keep his commandments. It ain't hard to do. It ain't hard to do at all. It's not, it's, it's not hard to, to keep the Lord's Sabbath day. It's not hard to um, um, not to pollute yourself with drugs, not to kill your brother. These things are not hard, but our flesh, our, our sinful nature makes us do these things. And once we do, what's gonna be the wages of that? What's the payment of not doing what God commands us to do? Bring it out. Bad things. Bad things. You're right. You're right. But it's the ultimate bad thing that you're going to get if we don't keep the commandments of God. And this, this is the curse we got to break in our community by keeping the commandments of God. Come on. Romans chapter 6 verse 23. For the wages of sin is death. Is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So the wages of sin is going to be death. And so, see, I want you to leave here so something you can take to your sons and to your family. And we got to come back to God. Because if we don't come back to God, it's going to keep on happening. Death and struggle are going to keep on uh, uh, happening in our community. And how we come back to the, to the uh, uh, God is by keeping his law, statutes, and commandments. By first knowing who you are. I know I was, he, was, he was going over it. If I had to ask you what's your nationality, what would you tell me? Black Amer African American. Black African American. African American. African -American yeah, right? I'm, but think about. Now I ain't saying African American. I'm more. Oh, bro, American Black. American Black. That ain't that ain't too much better. Right. Like, that ain't too much better than African American. So, right here, like, give me, give me, um, give me that in Isaiah, Isaiah, um, uh, one, uh, one forty-seven and nineteen. So these right here are the are the children of God. These is God's children. God dealt with these people on this side a different way than he dealt with all the other nations of the earth. Right. He dealt with these people right here different than anybody else. That's why the things that happen to these people are so peculiar. Right? You have 
American black, as you said, you have West Indian blacks, Haitians, Puerto Ricans, Cubans, so on and so forth, right? But the name that God gave them, the name that the Most High gave them was Judah, Benjamin, Levi, Ephraim, Manasseh, Simeon, the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. So when we were talking about the love of God and the importance of keeping the commandments of God, he only gave them to a certain people. He didn't give them to everybody. Read that. Psalm chapter 147, verse 19. He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation. And as far as and as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. You heard what God just said? God said, I didn't deal with any other nation. But I gave you, Jacob, Israel, my laws and judgments. I gave only you that. So that should make you feel very, very special. Hey, my brother, when I'm going over here, it's who God gave his laws to. Who God gave his instructions to. Because he didn't give them to everybody. That what make our people so peculiar among everybody else. That's why the things that happen to us is so peculiar according to everybody else. Because why are we the only people that want to win the slavery on cargo slave ships? Why don't it happen to us? Why are we the only people that pick, pick cotton in the cotton field? Why don't it happen to us? Why are we the only people who, they say we 13% of the population, but not a percent of the jail population? Why did it only happen to us? It because God gave us his law of and commandments, and, but we don't keep it. Right? So, I'm going into nationality. I was showing this sister who she were in the Bible. Because you're going over some of the things that happen to our people that's so peculiar on the child people. Give me uh, Deuteronomy 28 and 15 real quick. Then I want Deuteronomy 28 and 32. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Now I'm going to ask y'all a question. Is a curse a good thing or a bad thing? It's hot out here. Bad. You don't want to be cursed. God said, if you don't listen to me, basically, you're going to be cursed. You're going to be cursed. Not fat. Let's keep reading. Verse 16. Cursed shalt thou be in the city, and cursed shalt thou be in the field. The Bible says, so if you don't listen to me, cursed, you're going to be in the city, and cursed, you're going to be in the field. Let me ask y'all a question. What? Give me some examples of being cursed in the city. Get out. Cursed in the city. Cursed in the city. Remember you said curse, a curse is a bad thing, right? So think about our people being cursed in the city or having bad things happen to them in the city. Well, I guess it's as you said, 13% of the population, but 90% is incarcerated. Right, right. So what we what we stay at in the city for the most part. Okay. In the in the worst conditions. You may gonna have some people that stay that, that live good. But you can never rise above the rest of your people. But you go to any other city, right? Like Indianapolis, you're going to have our people in the hood, right? Well, I'm from, I'm from Alabama. You're going to have people in the worst conditions. Uh, Chicago, New York, so on and so forth. Our people primarily stay in the worst conditions in the city. And now it's been like that ever since we got out of slavery, right? So the Bible said we're going to be cursed in the city. And most of all the, the urban decay and all the things that, that's bad about a city, applies to us and it happens to us, right? And the Bible says we're gonna be cursed in the field. Give me some examples of being cursed in the field. Employment, I guess you could say that. Huh? Employment, you know, being denied jobs. That's good, that's good. You know what I'm saying? That's good, that's good. Things of that sort. But I wanna bring it to like, because like, we talked about the city, that'd be good for the city. But then think about the field. What our people did in the fields? They works, right? Cotton fields, sugar cane fields, tobacco fields. These are things that afflicted our people over 400 years, right? And even when we got out of slavery, went to the city, moved to the north, moved to the west, we had to deal with what? We had to deal with racial segregation, red line. Uh, 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 y'all niggas can't come over here. Y'all gotta stay over there. So even when we got, even when we got out the fields, our condition didn't change. We're no better, right? These are all curses in the Bible for not listening to God, right? It, and it's so particular only to us. Verse 32. Verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thy eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. 
So the Bible says our sons and our daughters shall be given unto another people. Who else went through this? Nobody. Nobody. I can't find out a picture of nobody else with you see the see the bro right here? Come up close real quick, bro. I'll show you this. See this right here? That's a white man with an auction block. See where it got sale? You know, like you auctioning cars or whatever. That's how they did our people. You see this lady? She about to get her daughter taken away from her. That's why she that's why they hugging. Right? I can't find that now, pitch, no Chinese man, no um no uh, uh 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 white man, nobody else went through the curses. Nobody else. And the Bible said they're gonna only gonna happen to the people who I gave my laws, statutes, and commandments to. Only those people. Now I'm gonna give you the name of those people. Now I'm gonna see does it does it correlate, right? Because I'm reading you history out of the Bible that lines exactly up with our history, right? You hear me, big bro? Matter of fact, get 40. Let's put a little bit more stamp on. Verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Who had those iron on him? But the flip, the, the, the crazy part about that, about having a yoke, a yoke of iron on your neck. But think about it. What, what happened in... 1865. Okay, okay. 1865. 1865. What happened in 1865? I'm not in the story. Okay, okay, okay. Well, the Civil War happened, right? After the Civil War, it was something called the Emancipation Proclamation. Bring it up. Right? Well, they so called said so they freed the slaves, right? But once they freed the slaves, what happened? We went. Nowhere. We stayed right on the plantation and share crop for them. Right. And then once they so-called freed the slaves, what name did we end up taking? Jeremiah 17, 4. Now, boy, name, like, like, imagine, if I, if I may, what's the last name, my brother? Alan? Alan? Yes. Do you think that's your, your original name that came from your original people, Alan? No. It don't sound right, do it? No. I bet if you looked it up, you probably go back to England or something like that. Yeah, it's French or Spanish. French, but you don't look French to me. <laughs> don't look like you come from Paris, no. if I may say. I but them the names that we took in because when we got off the plantation, we lost our heritage. That's been destroyed as a people. Because if I can't give my son his true identity, his last name, that destroys him. Read that. Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 4. And thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. Don't that sound familiar? We lost our heritage in a land that we didn't know. Cause when we got out them cargo slave ships, we didn't know this land. We didn't know this land. But then when we got off those, those plantations, it took our heritage from us. Nobody else went through that. Nobody else. I'm gonna give you the name of those people, bro. I'm gonna give you the name of those people because it ain't black African American, it ain't Haitian, it ain't Cubans, it ain't uh, um, uh, Brazilian or whatever, right? I'm gonna give you the name of those people. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 1. Yep. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 1. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. Hold on, read that one more time, my brother. Listen up, my brother. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. So, what's the name of those people? You have to be Israel. Israel, bro. You an Israelite according to the Bible, right? Can your history lines up exactly with what the Bible say? That makes sense, bro. It makes sense. I want to make sense. You got, you got a question? No. Oh, praise. I want, I, want, I, want to, I want to tie it in, bro, because you can't deny history. You can't deny this. What? You can't deny the old text that was written 3,000, 5,000 years ago, right before it happened. Give me Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. Because this cannot be refuted. Because we're the only people that came over on cargo slave ships. We're the only people that served in cotton fields, sugar cane fields, tobacco fields, and did all that. Read that. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So the Bible said we're going to get brought into Egypt again. 
Now, I know, I know you said you wanted this story, but the children of Israel, this ain't, this ain't the first time we served slavery. It ain't the first time. So give me, give me Ezra chapter 1 verse 48. Ezra chapter 1 verse 48. I think that's what I want. Let me say, let me show you, let me show you the correlation because it said, I'm going to bring you back into Egypt again, but this time going to be with ships. So it was something that we hadn't been doing in Egypt the first time. All right, let's find out. No Say it again, hey. Before the flood? Moses when he brought his people out of Egypt. Okay, okay, through the Red Sea? Yeah, yeah before, yeah, yeah, you got exactly right. Even before that? Oh, I'm trying to get my timeline. Yes, before he led us out, right, because he had a reason to lead us out. Right. right. Yeah. It was a reason why we didn't want to stay in Egypt no more. So I'm going to show you the reason why we had to be laid out through the Red Sea. All right? You got that? Uh, 1 and 13. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Exodus chapter 1, verse 13. Right and the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. Mm -hmm. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage. With what? Hard bondage. Uh -huh. In mortar and in brick and in all manner of service in the field. All their service, wherein they made them serve, was with rigor. You heard that, bro? You heard what we were doing in Egypt on the Pharaoh? Serving hard bondage with rigor. That's hard work. Same thing we was doing here. Now, let's, let's bring it back, right? Let's bring it back to, uh, bring it back to Deuteronomy. Because kind of using hip talk. Let me show you something. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Oh. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with Ships. So we know what went on in Egypt. Hard bondage, slavery, right? So let me ask you a question. What did our people do on plantations in the South? Cheese! Basically the same thing. Same thing, right? So if I say I'll put you on the plantation, you don't know what I'm talking about by me having to actually say the word slavery or bondage, right? It's like, boy, I'll put you on a plantation. You're like, damn, I don't want to go to a plantation. I know what they did on plantations. You served the slavery. Same thing here. They just came out of Egypt, as you said, my brother, through the Red Sea. So you're saying, hey, if y'all don't do what God commands y'all to do, y'all can go back back into Egypt. But like, now I don't want to go back into Egypt. But this time it's going to be different. It's going to be on ships. That's how you know it's not talking about the same place as you see this right here because you see the Red Sea right here? Cross over here into the land of Canaan, what became the land of Israel, right? And so, but he said, you don't need a ship to get from here unto here. You don't need it, right? So now you know you're talking about a something different, a spiritual Egypt. Because he took us over here to the spirits of Egypt where we did the exact same thing that we did over here. Period. What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Oh!